The movie begins at night in the city, with a soundtrack in the background that made me believe for a second that this was Terminator the motion picture. As the South and Germany, so will the machines rise again. We meet Rita again, who is missing Hugo very strongly, and because of this, howls at the moon. Foxes don't howl at the moon! We then cut over to Conrad, the husband of Isabel. Now that his former mistress is in the loony bin, he has taken control of her movie company and decided to make a movie with a new star that looks terribly underaged and underfed. He explains his goons that, although his wife was a crazy witch, her idea to use the most exotic animal in the world for her movie and sell tons of merchandise wasn't so bad after all. So they will go to the jungle and catch Hugo. Damn those greedy movie producers! Shamelessly using a cute little animal to sell worthless plastic garbage. Kids movies are about art and conveying a great message. Isn't that right, Mr. Lorax? We build masters. What do you drive? Him. Uh, aren't we forgetting something? Oh, and do see Dr. Seuss's The Lorax in theaters this March. Exactly. Then another song starts, and we see all the different animals of the jungle coming together to listen to Hogo's story. How he was hunted by strange creatures that don't live in trees or caves. And the name of these creatures is... Man. shape but satanic in spirit, man likes to spend most of his time destroying things because he is worse than the devil if he was a pedophile. Talking about his adventures makes him think of Rita, and his sadness overcomes him. Rita! Oh yo! Now get the fuck out! Come on you motherfuckers! We go back to Conrad, who bought the entire portion of the jungle where Hugo lives to catch him more easy. In order to do that, he cuts down all trees. Great idea, fellas! This will result in a PR disaster and not a single parent will go and watch your movie. Hugo tries to stop the tree cutter, but fails. His friends save him before he gets crushed and they run away. But Hugo doesn't want to give up. Meanwhile, our villains decide to start a fire. Well, if he dies, we can later use CGI. That was a joke! When Hugo tries to escape the flames, he is finally put in a cage and once again brought back to human civilization. But who are the true animals here? They use a parachute for Hugo so he gets past customs, since it's illegal to bring back home animals from the jungle. How exactly do you suppose this is going to work out if your movie hits theaters? Oh no, wait, I forgot. Animal rights activists don't watch movies. It produces too much carbon dioxide. Who huh? Huh? Ah! go watches when you sleep? We meet Dr. Sturmdrang, an animal psychiatrist that will discipline Hugo and teach him how to play in movies. Um, why? Just film him sitting there and then use some CGI for some awkward mouth movements. It worked for this one. At first it seems the doctor is able to gain Hugo's trust, but when he puts on a leash, Hugo spits at him. Then he turns into Calvin Candy. That's ridiculous! That never happens to white people. Ah, oh, social justice warriors. Took them longer than usual. Hugo destroys some merchandise of him, which attracts the attention of a nearby bird. Hugo explains that he has been imprisoned here and that he has only one true friend in the whole city. She says that she knows Rita and Hugo begs her to tell her where he is. The bird, thankful for the feathers, agrees. Dr. Sturmdrang, shortly after, manages to bring Hugo on set. Even though he hasn't been trained properly yet. The director, that is not supposed to be Steven Spielberg, how do you get that idea, makes a few instructions and the shoot begins. 
But Hugo simply doesn't obey and gets Dr. Sturm drunk fired. The film crew then decides to use a different strategy. Conrad shows up with a dog named Miss Nutzi, a former animal movie star, that will show him why being in a film is awesome. Namely that you will be paid in food every time you do what you are told. Miss Nutzi explains that being an actor is all about faking emotions. Hugo asks why she hasn't tried to run away. She replies, what use is there in being free if you have everything you want? They are interrupted by Rita who managed to get past the guards thanks to nighttime. Hugo explains what's going on and says that he has missed her very much. Rita then accidentally makes some noise and alerts the guard dogs. The little red Ron escapes and Hugo is alone with Miss Nutzi again, who tells him she is his only ticket to get that leech off and get some food. Next morning Hugo cooperates and completely overacts in his role, but it seems everyone is satisfied anyway, making me wonder what piece of garbage movie this is going to be. From the people who brought you Twilight and the Phantom Menace comes a fucked up genetic experiment that saves the princess. As a reward, Hugo receives tons of candy, then they have a burp contest. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this shit. Miss Nutzi congratulates him after he has returned to his room and wants to know if he can help him out since the years haven't been very kind to her. Auch mein Gesicht war auf einer Tapete. Alle haben mich bewundert. Aber das Filmgeschäft ist grausam und ungerecht, voller Falschheiten und Intrigen. Rita shows up, saying she dug a hole under the fence so he can escape. Hugo answers, he can't, because he has to finish his movie. You know, I'm a creative genius and there's no other way to word it. I know you're not supposed to say that about yourself. I, you know, for me to say I wasn't a genius, I would just be lying to you and to myself. <laughs> Seeing how arrogant Hugo has become, she leaves, saying she can't understand how he can give up his freedom for a stupid movie. This was Hugo's wake up call and the very next morning he uses the first opportunity to escape, but he fails and now has to fight a dragon. Seriously, what kind of movie is this? Also, does the movement of this dragon seem familiar to you? What do you call that thing? Two words! I'm scrum! Hugo defeats the dragon that of course was just a machine and then uses it as an escape vehicle. The bird from earlier shows Hugo the way to the train tracks and says he just has to follow the path until he arrives at Rita's home. Later in the afternoon Hugo finds Rita's foxhole. <laughs> I take it back, I'm not getting too old for this. She is still pissed that he was about to abandon her but she can't stay mad at him for long. How can you avoid or recognize the early warning signs of an abusive, controlling relationship? Here are key behaviors to look for as outlined by Hedda Nussbaum, who now shares her experience through lectures. When they start to build a new home for Hugo, they are found by the bad guys and jump on a train. The next morning they jump into a river only to be hunted again. Rita and Hugo then hide on a farm. More specifically, they hide between a few pigs to ensure that the dogs can smell them. The pigs wonder what they want and the offer to explain they would like to live in the woods. The piggies don't know what that is since they have been born and lived under a roof their whole lives. They ask if there is any food in the woods and Rita answers that of course there is, which gives Hugo an idea. Wenn wir alle zusammen abhauen, kann uns keiner aufhalten. Ihr Schweine! Stolze und starke Schweine, hört mir zu! Warum lasst ihr euch in diesen winzigen Verschlägen einfärchen, wo euch draußen in den grünen Wäldern die Freiheit erwartet? Ich bin gekommen, um euch aus dem Gefängnis zu befreien! Lasst uns alle zusammen hinausstürmen in die Wälder! Es lebe die Freiheit! Freie Schweine sollt ihr sein! Ah! 
Mit freien Schweinen geht es fein. And so the swine revolution begins. Rita and Hugo ride with them into the sunset and to freedom. In the forest, the pigs demand to know where all the promised food is, and Hugo admits he himself is here for the first time and has no clue how to find any. And that's basically all revolutions in a nutshell. Don't you wait, this whole thing will turn into Animal Farm soon enough. But then Hugo remembers that the wild pigs in his jungle always use their snouts to find truffles, so he shows them how to use theirs. With the pigs happy, Rita says they have to find a home. Hugo says Rita can go ahead while he fills up his own stomach first. Hugo uses his wit to get a few nuts from a squirrel. 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 Furry creature that collects nuts. Germans can't say squirrel. Meanwhile, Konrad's private army puts up a fence around the forest. The reason he doesn't simply cut down all the trees again is because he fears the police might be around. And again, if you put the most precious animal on earth in your movie for the whole world to see, some people at some point are going to ask questions. He says autumn season is going to start soon, then our heroes won't have any place left to hide. Except if they are hibernating under the earth. Back to Hugo and Rita who found a new home in an empty badger hole. First it seems they have found the perfect place to do all the nasty things they want, but a couple of days later Hugo realizes that he has fleas and on top of that it's starting to get colder. Our yellow friend being from the jungle is not used to these temperatures and starts to believe he is going to die soon. Rita tries to explain, but Hugo doesn't believe her, saying if this is what freedom means, he wishes to go back to his movie. Rita, sad and angry to hear this, calls him selfish and leaves. Later that day, Rita meets Mrs. Bird again, who has a simple but brilliant solution to their dilemma. If it's too cold, why not go south like she and her family do? Meanwhile, Hugo heads towards the film crew's camp. He overhears how Konrad is planning to use his bull terrier to kill Rita, since she is such a bad influence. Then our main bad guy fires his actress when she objects. He releases the hounds in a way that would make Mr. Burns proud and the hunt for Hugo begins. Rita and Hugo find one another and embrace. Hugo apologizes for being a jerk and says they have to get out of the woods before the dogs kill her. They try to get over the fence, but the spikes make that impossible. Digging a hole takes too long, so they go to the frozen river where they sneak through a small exit in the wire. Thanks to the ice, they manage to gain a lot of speed, but the dogs are not far behind. Holy Jiminy Crickets! Where did you buy those dogs? The Umbrella Corporation? Conrad waits for them under a bridge with a tranquilizer and our heroes walk right into his trap. When it seems that all is lost, one of the pigs helps them out and breaks the ice under them. The actress returns with the police, whom she told about Konrad's criminal deeds. He gets arrested and so Rita and Hugo get on the next train into warmer territories. Yay! Fuck our friends and family, I guess! And that was Hugo, Filmstar wieder wen. So, what can I say? Well... It's still mediocre. Some good, some bad, nothing much to say. Although I personally believe it's a little bit less okay than the first one. The songs are way better than before, but still forgettable. They have visibly upgraded the animation and the acting is better, but yeah, that's about it. Watch it if you have some money to spare, but if not, then avoid it for something less. Meh. And so this episode comes to a close. We are almost done with Hugo. There's only one movie left. The German guy, out and auf Wiedersehen.